So today we are beginning our last unit in Scratch. Uh, we call it Clones and Modeling. In Clones, we're going to make copies of sprites, which is really useful if you want to play games and for other purposes. Um, and Modeling is uh, all about using coding to try to mile, uh, model scientific events and learn from the different scientific models you might create. So we're going to have to take a kind of a brief look at that. Now one of the first things we're going to have to do is teach you a skill you're going to need. Um, you're going to be dealing with lists and you're going to need to export them and then create a graph of the data that you find. So I'm going to walk you through how to do that. So I have set up um, a couple of lists, x values and y values I'm calling them. You'll notice that the x values goes from 0 to 20 and then the y values, uh, you can see that each value is basically the x value squared. So this is going to be a parabolic function once we graph it. Um, all right, so this is how you want to go ahead and uh, export your graph. You want to right click on a list or control click it um, and you'll hit export. And when you hit export, you're going to create uh, a text file that you want to save. I'm calling it X values and I'm going to save it on my desktop. Make sure you save it somewhere that you can find it later. I'm doing this on a Mac. So save it on your H drive or somewhere in documents within your computer. Um, go ahead and save it and then you want to go ahead and export the other one. So I'll say export and I will save that one called Y values. So there's Y values save and okay now I have saved those two text files. Now I want to bring those files or that data into a Google Sheets. Uh, Google Sheets is really powerful. Um, it's based on spreadsheets or Excel and uh, it's getting better and better uh, all the time. So um, scientists, engineers, mathematicians, accountants use this all the time. It's really great for collaborating. So we're going to go new. We go, I went to Google Drive and I'm going to hit new Google Sheets. I'm going to get a new Google Sheet and bring it up. Okay, here we go. And I'm going to title it um, Test on Graphing and Importing. Okay, so if I get lost, I can come back to this file. So I want to bring in the data now. So I'll say File. And I'm looking down here for import. I'm going to import that data. I'm going to go find it on my hard drive. So I'm going to upload it and select the file from my computer. And I look at my desktop and there it is, X value. So I'm going to bring that one in first. Now it's going to give you several choices. Create a new spreadsheet, insert the sheet. It doesn't really matter which one you do for the first one. Um, and the, the file is already separated probably by return characters. And so Google Sheets will figure that out. So you don't have to worry about this stuff. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and say, uh, I'll say replace spreadsheet. I'm just going to uh, replace the current sheet. It doesn't really matter, but I'm going to go ahead and do that. And so it's going to put it on the new one. And here we go. Here is my data. So I've got from 0 to 19. Uh, okay, now I want to bring in that Y data. Actually, I'm going to edit this just slightly. I'm going to, I'm going to grab all of it. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to copy it. Or actually, I'm going to cut it. So Apple X or Control X cut. And then move it down. And I'm going to put a little title in it called X values because you want to get in the habit of, of keeping track of what your data is. Okay, now I want to bring the Y value, so I'm going to say File, Import, and I'm going to go Upload, and I'm going to get my Y values. You could also drag and drop with Google Sheets, pretty slick, and I'll hit Open. And now I've got these same choices. I don't want to replace the one that I had because um, because I don't want to overwrite the data I just did, so I might just append rows to the current sheet and then I'll go grab those and move them around. So I'm going to append to the current sheet and hit import and aha here they are. All that data just came in here down at the bottom. So I'm going to grab that data. I'm going to cut it again and now I'm going to move it up here and I'm going to call this one Y values. Okay. So now I want to go ahead and graph this data. And the way you graph in Google Sheets is you grab all of the data. So I'm going to select it so it's all colored, um, blued out I guess. And I'm going to go insert chart. And it's going to automatically guess what kind of graph you want. Um, typically, when we're doing graphs, especially when I teach in physics, we don't do line charts. We do what are called XY scatter graphs. So I'd like you to go ahead and do that. So choose down here to where it says scatter chart. And you're going to get all of these nice little dots. And this is what we predicted, right? That it was X. The y value is just the x squared value, so you're going to get a little graph like that. So these graphs become interesting to look at. You can play with the data, you can play with the axes, uh, but I just want to get you uh, to learn how to actually create a graph. 
Um, it, within your lab, you're then going to be asked to grab this graph and drop it into a Google Doc. So that's really easy to do. You just select the graph, you copy it, and then I'm going to go to Google Drive again. I'm going to say New Google Doc, and I'll say uh, Modeling Graphs or something like that. Graphs. And I just paste it in there. And I want to link it because if I link it, then if I change my original graph, it's going to change in my Google Docs. So I'll say paste, and there it is. And then you can edit around. You can add other text, you can add questions, all sorts of things. So uh, then when you get this, you're going to share this document with me. The way you share it is you go into this little blue button, blue button where it says share, and uh, give, oh, I better name it first. Yeah, that's fine. I'll name it. And now I'm going to go right here. I'm going to get shareable link, and I copy that link. And that's the URL that you want to send me uh, on your Google submittal form so that I can then access and look at your Google Doc. Okay, So that's by far the easiest way. So hit the share button, copy that, and then you can paste it into your Google form. Okay, so that's just how to use Google Sheets. Uh, now let's get back to um, modeling and specifically clones. So we're going to start with clones. Um, I'm going to bring up um, a file in Scratch to get your first kind of look at what clones look like. So here we go, we have a, um, uh, a little cat, and we have to click the green flag, and it says use up and arrow, down arrows to move the cat, the cat, and then the space bar to shoot apples. So if I click this, then I go up and down to move the cat. Here it goes, up and down, and now I'm going to hit the space bar, and boo! I'm now shooting, boo! Apples. Whenever I hit the space bar, apple, 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 you can fire apples. And that's really cool, like if you're going to fire things in a game, or have things dancing around uh, that's really applicable. So let's see how you do that inside. I'm going to give you a quick glance and then we're going to code one of these together. So I'm going to stop it for now. Stop. Okay, so what it says is the cat, when the green flag is clicked, it's going to go to a certain spot. So that's where it's going to start off the code. It's going to give you a message. Use the up arrows, space bar to fire. Then it's going to give a forever loop. It says if the key arrow up arrow is pressed, it's going to change Y by 10. So what that means is, it's going to be forever waiting for you to hit an arrow. When you do hit the arrow, you're going to move the cat up or down. So that's what the up arrow and down arrow are going to do. Then you also have uh, when your space bar is pressed, and that's when we're going to fire the apples. And it says create clone of apple. Well, what is a clone of an apple? So it's in here in the, in the cat sprite that I'm actually creating the clones, but the clone is of the apple sprite. So let's go look at the apple code. In the apple code, uh, first of all, when we click the green flag, we're going to hide the apple because we don't want it to show up until we actually want to fire one. So it says, when I start as a clone, so that's going to be under control blocks here. When, when I start as a clone, you're going to grab that code right there, and, um, and then you can just say, well, what happens? When I'm going to start as a clone, I'm going to go to the sprite. So this is really neat coding that is built into, uh, built into Scratch. So you can have that go right to wherever the, the cat is. So the clone is going to start wherever the cat is. It's going to show up. And then it's going to start moving 10 steps to the right. So that's going to cause it to go do, 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 all the way across the right. If it touches the edge, which it eventually will do, then it will disappear by becoming deleted. Okay, so really simple code, but very powerful. Um, let's look at an example. Uh, this is a music video that I showed you once before um, by uh, some students from last year. And you get to take a look at how he create how the, these guys created clones. So I hit the green flag. Okay, so I had several pandas show up and then they started dancing together and changing colors. Well, how did they do that? Now it's really complicated. I don't expect you to figure all of this out, but let's take a quick look, okay? When the green flag is clicked, he sets the volume. Also, this is kind of where he sets it up. And, uh, and what he does, he says, set panda to zero. So he's going to have the first panda. This is the first panda zero. And then he's going to switch his costume. And then he's going to repeat several times where he's going to create six different um, pandas. Panda one, panda two, panda three, panda four, panda five, panda six. And every time he works his way through this, he creates a new one. So create a clone of myself. Okay, so I just worked through that code, and now it's going to be dancing. Okay, so he just created a clone. So he's creating the clone, and then once he creates it, he broadcasts dance. Now this is really complicated code, um, but it gives you a sense of, of the powerful nature of what you can be doing here. So calling dance makes this happen. Okay, it has that color effect. He changes color um, every couple, every, every 0.4 seconds, going to change color, and he changes costume. That's what makes him dance and change color at the same time. So if I click this again, 
First I create the clones and then they start dancing and changing color. All right, so super powerful. All right, quick little look. Now, um, what I'm gonna have you do right now is you're going to code something with me. So I have a link here to Capturing the Apples Remix this. Um, you're gonna create a code and, and you're gonna create it alongside of me. So what you wanna do right now is pause this video and open up a window in Scratch so that you can create the code with me. Now to remix the code that you're gonna start with, go ahead to the course calendar and you'll say, see Apple Cart code with me. So go ahead and click on that and open it up. And so you're gonna have a separate window that you're gonna be coding and you're gonna have your own version, remix it, and then you're gonna be coding it along with me. So go ahead and do that and then come back to this video. Okay, hopefully you're back and you're ready to code along with me. Now we are gonna build a little um, apple cart game. So we're gonna start with this um, sprite over here where we have the, the cart. Okay, now first thing we wanna do is we wanna have the cart kind of be able to move around. So I'll start with uh, when, when the green flag is clicked, I'm gonna go to a certain space. Um, let's have it go, let's have it go right here to start. So I'm gonna say go to, to that spot to start. Um, and then I'm gonna have a forever loop because I want this to be happening all the time through the duration of the game. And so I get my forever loop. And inside my forever loop, I'm gonna say, um, if I click the right arrow, I want this cart to move to the right. And if I click the left arrow, I want the cart to move to the left. So I'm gonna say if, if I collect, click, click, um, click on the right arrow, so I'm gonna say if key, not space, but right arrow is clicked, what do I want it to do? I want to change my X position. Basically, I want it to move. So I'm gonna move, change by, and I'm just gonna start with like 30. And you can adjust these numbers if you don't think it's moving fast enough, okay? So now that's really good. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate that code because I'm gonna do another set of code that's really similar. So I'm gonna say, turn the, to have it be the left arrow, left arrow, and I'm gonna change X by negative 30. So that's gonna go in the other direction. So let's test it and see if it works. So I click this, and now if I go right arrow, I can get that card to move back and forth. And you can adjust it and say you wanna go by, up by 20 or down 20, however you wanna do it. Okay, so now we've got the cart moving. Now we wanna create our little Apple clone. So go on over to the Apple code and uh, let's take a look what we're gonna do here. So when the green flag, when the green flag, oops, that's not what I wanna do. When the green flag is clicked, we want to start off by having a variable. So we wanna have a variable that keeps track of the source. So I'm gonna say, set the score to zero. This is the very beginning of the game. Um, and I'm going to start by showing showing my apple. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to play this, uh, I'm going to play it a, a total of 30 times. Well, I'm going to do it like 20 times. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say repeat this maybe 20 times. So I'm going to drop a total of 20 apples in the course of my game. Um, and so here's what I do. I'm going to go to, da, 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 da. I'm going to have the apple go to the very top of the, top of the frame. So let me figure out where that's going to be. Hold on a second. So let's, let's get our apple here. Let's get him showing up. So let's see. I want to show this. Let's show him first so I can see my apple. Okay. So there's my apple right there. Okay. So I want him to be at the tippy tippy top and he's going to come falling down out of the sky and into my apple cart. So I'm going to have him start by uh, the X value being somewhere in between the left ed and left side and the right side, but at the very tippy top. So um, I'm gonna start by having each apple is gonna start by going to, okay, it's gonna go to uh, the Y position of 180, but then I, I want it to go somewhere within that realm along the top. So I'm gonna pick a random value for my X position, and I want my random value to be between negative 210 and 210. So that's almost the entire width of the screen, but without going off the edge, okay? So I'm gonna start here, and then I'm going to create a clone of myself. And so clones are created in here, okay? So the apple's gonna create a clone of itself, um, and then I'm gonna have the apple fall in just a minute, and I'm gonna create that code. But every time I create a clone, I wanna create another one. So it's, one apple's gonna fall, and then another apple's gonna fall, and then another apple's gonna fall, and so I want to wait for um, a little bit of time 
before I drop another apple. Now I don't want to wait exactly one second because then it gets too predictable and the game isn't as fun. So what I want to do instead is I'm going to pick, uh, wait a, a random amount of time. So I'm going to go, I'm going to wait between um, 0.1 seconds, 0.1 seconds and one and a half seconds. So 1.5 seconds. So you might have two apples coming down really fast or then there might be a little bit of a wait and that's what kind of makes the game more fun. Okay. So that is going to cause um, apples to be created. So if I click on this now, you can't really tell, but you can see apples are going to show, start showing up along the top. Okay. Now we want to have something actually happen with those apples. In other words, we want them to fall like they're falling with gravity. Okay. So now you're going to say, all right, what's going to happen when I actually start as a clone? So when one of those extra apples are created, what is going to happen? So we'll say, when I start as a clone, the first thing I'm going to do uh, well, I'm gonna. I want, I want to be falling down, and so I'm gonna say forever, forever. When I, I'm gonna change my Y position, and I want to have it kind of animate to call fall downward. So I'm gonna change my Y position by, and I'm gonna say negative 10. Anytime you want, just pause the video, catch up with code, and then come back. Next, I'm gonna say if, if. If I'm touching the cart, so the idea is the apple's going to fall down. If the cart catches it, then you want to get, you want to score a point. And if you miss, then you don't get a point, or you might even lose a point. Like you get to decide how you want to play the game. So I'm going to say, if I'm touching the cart, um, so if I'm touching the cart, so touching the cart, okay, then I want my score to increase. Like, yay, I got one. So I'm going to increase my score by one. And then if that happens, I want it to play a happy sound. So, um, well, I don't know what's a good happy sound. I'm going to say fairy dust. Okay, so that's going to play the sound fairy dust. And so that'll be a good sound. Now, if I catch the clone, I actually want it to disappear because I got it. So it's going to go away. I'm not going to be able to build up my apples in my cart. That's a little bit too complicated for, for Scratch for this code. Um, so once I'm done and I've caught it and I've scored it, then I delete the clone and it goes away. Now, if I don't touch the cart, as the, as the apple starts to fall, what happens when it goes off down below, right? You want it to disappear. You don't want it to, to keep going. Um, and so we have to decide what we're going to happen in that case. So we're going to say if, we're going to add another little if clause in here. And we're going to say if, we got a uh, less than here. We're going to say if the Y position, in other words, if, if the apple is falling off the bottom, so if the Y position is, where's Y position? Here it is. If the Y position gets to be less than, uh, we'll say, minus 100, okay? That means that it didn't touch the cart, but it did fall below the cart, okay? If it gets to that position, then you want to play a sad sound because, like, eh, you didn't get it. So I'm going to say play a sad sound, let's say play a sound, and we're going to have the play sound Alien Creek, Alien Creek, sorry. And then you're going to delete the clone because well, now the clone has served its purpose, it's gotten to the bottom of the screen, and it is done, and it's going to go away. All right, so here is our code. Let's see if we can get it to run. Uh, now, I'm, remember, I'm going to start the thing, and the apple's going to start to fall. Notice when I catch them, I get a, a bad sound. No, now I'm going to try to catch them. And you should see my score increasing. Oops, my score is not increasing. So we must have an issue with the score. All right, but let's go ahead and stop that for now. Okay, uh, set score to one. Ah, I forgot to, I said set score to one instead of change score. So you probably caught that while I was doing that. I want to change score by one whenever I, uh, I want to change the score by one, not set the score by one. And that way it will increment whenever I play. Let's try it now. Okay, now my score is going up. Good. Okay, so there you go. So that's a quick little introduction on how powerful you can um, use games and clones in your games. And that, let's see, so uh, that's all we're going to talk about for today in terms of the game modeling. We'll talk about that another time, but this should get you started at least for your pair programming. In your pair programming, you're going to want to um, play around with uh, Space Invaders code where you're going to uh, create, mimic the Space Invaders game. And I've given you a link so you can check that out in your lab. Okay, good luck.